The world I see holds nothing that I want. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Beyond this world, there is a world I want. Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Modern Mystics. Hey. And um, yeah, this week I felt like I didn't want to speak on some of the topics of, you know, like what have I been going through this past uh, week or two. And I was just listening to Ken's show and yeah, it was really beautiful and it feels very similar to like the same kind of feelings, um, you know, it's been like moving through a lot of unworthiness and, and lack. And I feel like idols tie into all that. Um, so I thought, yeah, those are some of the themes for today's show. And um, yeah, like even, you know, it shows up in a lot of ways, this unworthiness. And, and for me, it shows up like with the show because it's like the ego wants to take it its own way. And, you know, it's like, David talked about how it's like low self-esteem, self-esteem and high self-esteem are basically they're the same thing. They both come from the ego and they're both really unworthiness. So it's like I could come on the show and be all like weak and whatever. And that's unworthiness. Or I could come on the show and act like I'm some kind of like master or spiritual master or whatever. Um, and then that would be unworthiness too. So it's like neither of those is the answer. So it's like there's this middle way with the Holy Spirit and that's being in touch with the Spirit and that's really the magnitude. You know, it has nothing to do with low self-esteem or high self-esteem. And that's what washes away this unworthiness. So, so yeah. And yeah, I was just listening to David speak more about unworthiness and, you know, it can even show up in the form of like physical symptoms, you know, like pain in the body or, or sickness or accidents, even like a car accident, you know, there's like, there's no accidents really. So it's all really unworthiness. I even thought like, you know, it's like the technical difficulties we're having before the show. I was like, that's funny. That's probably the unworthiness in the mind. And um, yeah, it's like, but it's like by following the spirit's purpose and following the miracles and experiencing the miracles, then it's like, then we can start to wash away this unworthiness and yeah yeah I feel like even you know it shows up in many ways it's like we don't know really how we're gonna move through this unworthiness and one example for me was even the intro of my show um, it was like I was having prompts to, to make an intro for the show and I delayed for so long and I didn't even know why I was really delaying and then once I made the intro it just felt so inspiring and lifted me up like it was a total miracle for me and I could see like wow this unworthiness was trying to hold me back from experiencing the miracle that I would feel like through following the prompt to make this intro and yeah I just thought you know I do have a video that I would like to share with you guys. And it's David, he's talking about um, prayer and desire. And yeah, so I might, may or may not pause it. Maybe we'll just watch it through, we'll see. And then we'll see how it relates to today's topic. Guide the prayers of my heart. Yeah, prayer, prayer is a, a very interesting topic because um, you might say a, a synonym or a word that means the same thing as prayer is desire. So whenever you have a desire for anything, that is the prayer of your heart. And what we're really trying to do, and this is more in the line with where Armel was taking you and talking, is, is that if you think of like the core of your heart is like the desire or like the altar, the altar, like temples have altars, uh, whether it's a Jewish or Christian or Buddhist or whatever, that ultimately what you want to do is you want to clean the altar. You want to clear the altar of every desire for idols. And then 
leave the altar empty, because that's kind of a way of saying, just you, God, nothing else but you. You know, kind of like in the Bible, you know, it's it's lo like, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and might, and and hold no graven images before God. And it's it's in all different traditions and spiritualities about really having peace or love and God at the core, and then letting go of everything else. Now, when the mind falls asleep and believes in the ego, it can't help but pray for idols. Because coming to earth means that, that there's a desire in the mind for idols. Nobody comes here with no desires. They wouldn't come here. <laughs> There's no need to leave nirvana or leave heaven if you just are, are one and you know who you are. But the mind falling asleep and dreaming of a world of separation. So, you're... Yeah, so, speaking more on what, what David was speaking to, it's like, yeah, you know, I've spoken about this a lot, and yeah, it's like when I was younger, you know, 10 years old or something, I watched that movie, Batman Begins, and then I was speaking about that scene where he's like a young boy with his parents on the train, and they're just going by the city, and then his father points out that that's our tower in the middle, and, um, you know, they were basically billionaires and had a lot of influence and power and whatever, and and when I was watching that, I was like, wow, that's the magnitude I want, or whatever. And, and now I can see that really, like, that's actually, like, unworthiness. Um, and, you know, I never saw that before. I actually thought, like, that is magnitude, but it's like what David's saying. It's like, really, that's the idol that, you know, we just feel so unworthy, like, this unworthiness in the mind. It's like, okay, well, I'll never get back to God, you know, it's like, I'll never really get back to where I really want to be, so let me try to scramble and find, like, the next best thing, and then it's like, we come up with all these idols out of this unworthiness to kind of replace God because of this, like, terrible feeling, you know, of, like, wrongness and, and lack, and it's like, okay, I feel this lack and this unworthiness, so let me try to find something to fill that up, you know, fill that void. And even like throughout high school and early childhood, you know, I, I, I didn't even know this until one of my friends pointed it out, but he, but I had this like hunchback and it's still a little bit there, but it's like this, this hunchback. And, and when I would walk even like I would walk and then I would stare at the ground while I was walking. And I didn't know that was unusual. Like, I thought, you know, that's normal. I look at the ground when I walk. What's, what's the big deal about that? And then one of my f best friends, he was like, why do you look at the ground when you walk? And that was like uh, a moment where I was like, oh, wow. Like, you know, I was like so unconscious. All, daily life was so unconscious, so much unworthiness that I didn't even know it was unworthiness. But when he said that, it like something like sparked. I was like, wow, you're right. Like, why do I look at the ground when I walk? <laughs> you know, and, and it's like, ego can say, yeah, it's because of the physical, whatever. It's like, no, it's not. It's really just like this unworthiness in the mind. And so now, you know, and actually, so that was like, seems to be through the low self-esteem days of Andy. And then it seems like I found the course at some point and then after I found the course, it went to the high self-esteem days of Andy where the unworthiness showed up more like, you know, I was going to the gym, get, get really, really muscular, you know, go after that business, try to make millions of dollars and all that kind of thing. And the funny part is, okay, maybe I wasn't staring at the ground anymore. Like now I was like conscious of it, pull my shoulders back, you know, go to the gym, get really ripped or whatever. And now, but it was really, nothing really changed. You know, it was like what I was saying about low self-esteem, high self-esteem is the same thing because now it was like, after I would go to the gym, I had so much pain. And even though my, my form was perfect, everything seemed perfect. Um, but the thing is, my neck and my upper back would just be in a lot of pain. It's like, okay, so what, 
not, I'm not looking at the floor anymore, but it's like the pain is still there. So it just goes to show like that wasn't the answer either. And actually even that was unworthiness. And, and yeah, I got to see that, you know, I, I really didn't know that was unworthiness until like probably like very recently or something. And, and I even remember um, I was at the first mystery school and we were watching this movie, I can't remember the name, Before I Fall. And yeah, it's like I didn't know what unworthiness was, but I could just feel this like fog in my mind, this strange feeling. And when we were watching that movie, there was a scene at a party where like whatever this guy was getting all the girls or whatever. And, and then uh, after that, I, I remember, oh, that desire is still there. And then I was talking to Jason about it and I was like, yeah, I see that desire but you know, I let it go and whatever. And I was just telling him my experience and he was like, that's actually unworthiness. And when he said that, I completely like didn't hear him basically. It's like I wasn't ready to hear what unworthiness was at that point. But now when I look back, I can see like, wow, it's like all these desires and idols and things that I always wanted all came from this belief in unworthiness like it all came from this deep-seated unworthiness because it's like okay well I can't have what I really want like joy peace like supreme happiness consistent happiness so maybe yeah I'll look for it in idols and these form desires instead and I feel like everyone is really that way you know it's like no one really desires any of these things in form it's like we all really want consistent happiness and supreme happiness, but there's like this unworthiness in the mind. And I guess it's like the Holy Spirit's job to convince us through miracles that we are worthy. And it's like, we don't have to, um, you know, be content with littleness, with these idols and things that we don't even really want, but we're just compromising. So yeah, maybe we'll just continue the video. Gonna have there's going to be desires there, there's going to be prayers, and you might think of the return back to that pristine state as kind of like a ladder of prayer. And so the most important thing about prayer is, is don't try to skip over any steps. So if you heard you're whole and complete and perfect, you have no needs, all you have to do is accept your completion, your perfection, and, and your mind goes, I don't get it. <laughs> That's because there are steps that you will go through to get it, you know, to experience it. And the most important thing is is looking at at really the purpose or the motivation. It's, the, it's God knows the prayer of the heart before a word is spoken. And while the ego is still in the unconscious mind, you cannot help but pray for things for specific, for people, you know, it's quite common, you know, pray for my mother, uh, I pray for my mother's physical and psychological health, or I pray that I, I be, have a safe trip uh, on my travels here, or so on and so forth. But you do notice as you go higher up the ladder that whenever you're praying for specifics, you're still praying for the past to be repeated in some way that you think is good or better. And, and the prayer is still getting lifted up towards that, you know, let me accept myself as God created me, as pure love. That's, that's the highest prayer, is let me know myself as I truly am, as you created me. There can be no higher prayer than that. But it will just be a, very much like our one-on-one -on -one the other day, I said, Oh, you'll just be taken and carried and carried, and your prayers will go higher and higher and higher and higher, because that's the natural movement of all those prayers, to go up there. And then we, we could say that the final prayer is more just, again, a prayer of acceptance. Let me accept myself exactly as I am, exactly as you created me. But you can't skip over all the others, you know, it would... It just short circuits the whole thing, you know. You know, to just say the words without having it be truly 
where your heart's desire is, you know, is kind of just trying to leapfrog. And so you have to, you know, be practical. You're a natural prayer, so <laughs> let's keep up, up the ladder you go. I'll see you there. <laughs> and I'm with you every step of the way <laughs> as well, too. Yeah, so I know for me it's really about like recognizing the unworthiness and like allowing myself to get in touch with it and really noticing when it's there. It's like, oh, okay, okay, I see that. So, okay, I see the unworthiness. I don't know how to move through it, but it is this prayer of like, okay, Holy Spirit, like what would you have me do? What would you have me say? Yeah, and I feel like, you know, it is a constant prayer and, a, and setting the goal is one thing that's been so helpful for me. And I know even recently it's like, you know, I was talking about the whole neck pain and everything. And yeah, recently it came back and it's been less and less often that it's been coming, but it's like it came back recently and it, it was like hurting a lot. And I was like, what's going on? It's like, I, I didn't understand what was happening. And then um, I tried everything, you know, it's like I had two different friends give me massages, like several massages. And then, and then, you know, I took Tylenol and whatever. And all I could feel is I felt so like weak and terrible. And so what happened was, I don't know, something clicked in my mind because I had this bottle of Tylenol in my bedroom that I, I, I took one of them and, you know, it seemed to help a little, but it still wasn't going anywhere. So the next morning when I walked by it, I just felt like sick. I was like, what is this weakness? Like Tylenol? Like, what am I doing? I don't know. It was like, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I was like, yeah, I don't know. It's like something just doesn't feel right. Like there's some kind of like weakness in my mind. And then, and then basically, I was just in contemplation after that. And there was a couple of shows ago where I showed a video of David's where he was talking about service. And then he was talking near the end and it really like touched me where he said, um, you know, he would go through all these miracles, feel the joy, and then the ego would want to come back with the backlash. But then David would say, no, he would just tell the ego, no, like, I like that joy, I like that joy, no. And he would just, just continue on. And I don't know, that just felt so inspiring to me. And we had this recent online retreat where David was speaking at his Saturday morning session, just amazing session, it's on Spreaker. And he was basically saying that, you know, the mind is the decision maker, not the body. So it was like, it seemed like my body was hurting and, and I wasn't in touch with that at all. But after that little click of like being like sick with myself, I was like, what is this? Then, then all of a sudden I remembered what he said. It's like the mind's a decision maker, not the body. And then, I, and then right after that, I remembered from that clip I showed a couple of shows ago where he said, no, I like that joy, you know? And then the best part about when he said that was when his eyes like twinkled up, like when he said that you could really like see the joy in his eyes. And, and all of a sudden, I just started flashing in my mind. And then I just, I just in my mind, I just started saying like the same thing, like, like no, I, I like that joy, like, no. Like, I was just saying like, no to the ego and to the pain. And then, and then, yeah, it's like something just shifted in my mind. You know, it's like, it was like, this need not be. It's like, all you need to do is set the goal. Like, this need not be. And even in that, chapter this need not be you know it starts off very early on in paragraph seven it it says the habit of engaging with god and his creations is easily made if you actively refuse to let your mind slip away the problem is not one of concentration 
It is the belief that no one, including yourself, is worth consistent effort. Side with me consistently against this deception and do not permit this shabby belief to pull you back. The disheartened are useless to themselves and to me, but only the ego can be disheartened. And then it just says, have you really considered how many opportunities you have had to gladden yourself and how many of them you have refused? Yeah, and it just says, there's no limit to the power of a son of God, but he can limit the expression of his power as much as he chooses. And that's really just following the prompts. The, following the prompts leads you, leads you to opportunities to gladden yourself. Like, and it's like not judging what the prompts seem to look like either, because you know, it can be so simple, it can be so seemingly small, you know? Um, and I just had this experience with the last online retreat where, you know, I'm here in the studio now, I'm part of the studio team, and I'm over the, the mixer and the cameras during the, most of the shows and online retreat. And with uh, Michael, when he was speaking, I, I set up his microphone, and there was like a lot of unworthiness in my mind that day, and I set up his microphone. And, and during the online retreat, I could see it was like slanting, it was like slipping, and I could see the thoughts in my mind and it was literally, the thoughts in my mind was like, no, you can just, it's okay, just deal with it. Like, it won't fall, but you can just deal with this thought, you know, like throughout the rest of the session. It was like this unworthiness. It's like, I'm worthy of having a clear mind. Like, I don't have to deal with it like that, you know? It's like, you know, it's like side with me consistently against this deception. So I, I saw that thought and then I was like, no, like I'm worthy of a clear mind. I don't have to think about this slanting mic a whole session, you know? It's like, and then I, I looked over at Peter and I was like, can I go fix his mic? And he's like, y yes, turn the camera off real quick. I go over there, I fix the microphone. And that was just a symbol of deciding again and choosing for worthiness rather than unworthiness. And it's not about the form. It was just, it was really in the mind. It's like. I'm worthy of not dealing dealing with that thought, you know, for this whole for that whole session. So after I went up, I fixed the mic, and then I, I sat down and I just sank into this like beautiful experience. It was like this mystical experience. I just felt so clear and I was like, wow, like just from following a prompt. You know, it seems like such a small thing going up there and fixing Michael's microphone, but it was not a small thing. You know, it's like, have you really considered how many opportunities you have had to gladden yourself and how many of them you have refused. You know, it's like, it's not a small thing. It's like this unworthiness is deep and we need as many experiences like that, as many miracles that we can get to really wash it all away and like find out who we are. And, and yeah, you know, it's like, I feel like I've talked about this before, but this is like, feels like the year of stepping into magnitude and everything that's not that is going to come up so it's like the year of releasing unworthiness so a lot of my shows will probably be about that so thank you guys so much thank you for joining me enjoy the next show with jason and i'll see you next sunday at the same time 11:30 a.m cdt 10:30 a.m mdt thank you Bye. Thank you.